What's up, everybody? How to increase your revenue and profit with this simple trick is what we're talking about today, everybody. My name is Jennifer Waters. Excited to have you guys on our uh, our show today. Good to have you. Hey, listen, if you're catching this live right now, I just want to know that you're out there. Let me uh, let me see it in the comments. If you're joining live right now, type live and type where you're from. What's your city? Uh, we have people watching from all over the world. It's really cool how this martial arts community just brings people together. Um, and even people outside the martial arts community are now starting to join in on this community of people wanting to change lives through martial arts, through uh, the things that they're teaching others, right? Live from Ithaca, New York. Yeah, New York in the house. Big Apple is here. We're going to be talking a lot today about increasing that revenue um, making sure that you have the proper structure to increase your profitability as well. And so I'm excited about our topic today and to dive into this. If you currently are struggling with generating enough revenue inside of your business, inside of your martial arts school, your academy, um, live from uh, Chorley, UK. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Woo woo in the house. Um, if you're currently struggling with that though, right, you're struggling to get revenue, you're struggling to uh, maybe even have enough students to support yourself. Like you're struggling to pay the rent, pay the bills. A lot of times it has to do with some very key behaviors, some very key things that are, is happening in your sales process is happening when people are, are joining your, your school, your academy. And the thing that you need to understand is that People do not care how much you know. They don't. A lot of times I, I've talked with clients in the past, other people in the martial arts community as well, that they go, well, I need to get this next level of certification. I need to get this because once I get this level of certification, this knowledge, then people will value what I do more. And the reality is the typical consumer that's going to come in to your school doesn't care. They don't know. Now, if they have a lot of knowledge already about martial arts, it means they got taught by somebody else and they're coming in for very specialized knowledge. And because of that, yes, certifications matter, right? But it's not everything. What matters more is that they know how much you care about them and their situation. Everybody's own story is their unique story that they want heard so think about it. When you meet somebody, don't you really find annoying those people that as soon as you meet them, they just start talking about themselves and only themselves. And they never ask you about you. Well, it's the same thing. You, you bring somebody into your school and then you start telling them about all your credentials, all your belts, all your things, blah, 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 blah. And you never ask them about why they're coming to you. You know, why is it that they need help? What is it that they're seeking to improve? Okay, those types of things are things that are going to help you be able to not only charge more, but also be more profitable. You see, we can charge more, but not keep people, which lowers our level of profitability. But when we charge more and we keep people for years inside of our school, I don't have to acquire new students like crazy because I keep a vast majority of my students. That allows me to have more profitability inside of my school. And listen, you might be thinking to yourself, well, how do I add this magical value that you're talking about, Jennifer? I'm going to show you guys how to instantly add value. Like you don't have to add anything new to your curriculum. You don't have to change your syllabus. You don't have to change your gradings, your exams. None of that. You don't need anything else except the thing that I'm going to show you. So make sure that you hang around until the end of this video so I can make sure I can go through that with you guys. And some of you might be thinking, OK, uh, I I'm really interested in this, but I need to understand more about what you're talking about, Jennifer. So let's talk for a moment about hobbies versus transformation. You see, People are only going to pay so much for punches and kicks, for, you know, chokes and triangles, for stick and knife, for whatever it is that you're teaching. They're only going to pay so much to learn that thing. They will pay much more if their life or their child's life can be transformed. 
right? So you think about it like this. If I'm just going into, let's say, a boxing gym and I go to learn boxing and I'm just learning how to punch, how to how to move my body, all of that, that's only going to be worth so much. Now, could it be worth a, a, a pretty penny? Yes. Do credentials matter in that standpoint? Potentially, if my goal is to compete, if my goal is to learn from the best because I want to be a world champion, then I'm going to go to the best coaches because I know that that's what I want. But if I'm coming in because I need to lose a little bit of weight, I thought that lifting weights was boring to me, so I'd rather come and do something else. I don't like your credentials matter, but that's not my main concern. My main concern is that I look better, that I fit into my clothes, that when my husband's looking at me, that I'm happy with the way he's looking at me. Like from a woman's perspective, those would be the things that would matter to her, not whether or not you've won a world championship whether or not your your gem is known for all these things. It doesn't matter. Likewise, if I'm bringing my son or my daughter into a martial arts class, I don't really care if I have no idea about martial arts. I don't really care how many tournaments that you've gone to. And I don't care how many black belts that you've earned in different styles or what degree of black belt you are. All of those things for me are not things that matter the most if my child is severely shy and I can't get him to stop being behind my leg. I have to keep pulling him around to the front whenever I'm introducing him to people. That's what matters to me, giving my child the confidence to go and do the things that they want to do without being scared. This is the real secret. People pay much more for life transformation than they do for a hobby. So, You have to find what it is that they need help transforming into. Do they need to become a more confident person? Do they need to lose weight? Do they need to stop being a person who's alone? Do they need a community of people that they can connect to and they can transform that way? Whatever it is that this person needs, does your program, does your service provide that? That's the real key is being able to do that. Now, if you're interested as well in learning about this, again, like I said, make sure you hang around because at the end, I'm going to talk to you about it. Instantly add value to get this transformation I'm talking about. And if you want me and my team to help you one-on-one to develop this, like to build this out for you, we're actually guaranteeing success with our program. All you have to do is comment, let's go in the comments. Me or a member of my team will reach out and see if our program is going to be able to help you and your specific needs. But when we realize that we're not just we're not just having a hobby, we're having a transformation, this is going to allow us to increase our pricing. Okay, a lot of you guys are pricing compared to other things that are going on in your town, right? So, by the way, I just want to shout out, we got people watching from Utah and the United States as well as Kentucky. Glad to have you guys on here. Um, When it comes to pricing, you might be pricing with people comparatively in your town in Kentucky or your town in, in Utah or in the UK. You might be looking around going, well, gymnastics is charging this and guitar lessons are that. And boxing is this and kickboxing is that and jujitsu is this and whatever it is that you're looking around at other people and you're you're determining that your price should be comparable, slightly cheaper or a little bit more expensive. Let me just say that's not the best way to price your program. The best way to price your program is based off of what your market and your area can bear. In other words, what is the average household income in your area? What can you potentially charge based off of your household income? And then secondly, how are you going to provide enough value to justify that? Okay, so once you find out that demo, the demographic of your area and you hone in on what your price could be based on the demographic of your area, then the next thing you have to say is, you know, maybe it's a scary number. Maybe that number comes back and it's like, holy crap, I could be charging $250 a month in my area, and I'm only charging $125. How how can I charge people that much? Because currently, you might just be selling punches and kicks or, you know, triangles and chokes or whatever it is. And you might need instead to be able to add value to what you're teaching. 
And here's how people typically will try to add value. Um, typically, what they'll do is they will try to go in and add other things. Like they will try to add in uh, life lessons or character development and, and that, you know, they have to create it or they have to buy a program to do that. Or maybe it for, for the adult side, they might be trying to go and get a personal trainer to come in and make recommendations for their students to provide more value. And both of those things are very valuable. I'm not saying that they're not valuable or that you should stop doing them if you're currently doing them. But you don't have to do them because both of those things are going to decrease your profit margin. You're going to pay for a program. It's going to decrease your profit margin. You're going to pay for a person to do something with your students. It's going to decrease your profit margin. And so you're going to be battling this game of margin. And that's not a fun game to battle when you're battling margin. You want to have a, a decent margin on top of what you're doing. You don't want to just barely be making ends meet. You want to be succeeding and, and crushing it and having some profit there for yourself, for your team. No business can thrive without profit. So this whole thing about profit is evil, it's not evil. If I'm employing more people because I'm profitable, that's a great thing. If I can improve my life and then show my team that my life's improved so their life can be improved, that's a great thing. If you don't have a team and you're a one man or a one woman show, in order for you to get to a team, you have to have enough profit margin to be able to pay them. So to instantly add value, you don't necessarily have to do anything different. You have to definitely change the way that you view what you do, as well as what the prospective student views what you do. For example, are you going to help this person by pouring into them, by providing more focus, more confidence, more discipline, more respect, any of those things? If you're doing that, then you need to name what you're doing. You know, it's our leadership development, it's our mentorship, it's our accountability, whatever it is, it's our accountability. You, you need to name that thing and then you need to slap a price tag on it. So how much is it worth, right? How much is it that um, you can say, okay, this is worth X amount. If I were just doing this, this one thing, if I only spent time helping kids learn how to be more respectful, if that was my job, if I was a counselor and that's all I did, what would I charge? If I was a life coach, what would I charge for adults to learn this thing? And you're going to add that as a value point. The other thing that you're going to also look at is you're going to look at what are the things that you do to help people actually achieve the goals that they set out to achieve? Do you provide some framework around that? Maybe it's belts, right? Maybe it's moving through the ranking structure. You're visually showing people this is what we do to achieve this. Maybe you don't have belts in what you do. Maybe it's, you know, they have a leaderboard based on how many classes that they've attended, how many times they've hit a certain amount. But whatever it is that you do, you need to show we do this and therefore this is valued at Y dollars, X dollars. If you have other support pieces that go along with what you do, like maybe you have an online academy, maybe you have um, where you have team members that will call people when they're missing from classes. Maybe you provide some type of structure that are leadership lessons or handouts or life lessons or character development or something like that. You're going to need to package that and you're going to need to establish a value point to that. Does that mean that you have to change anything that you're doing? No. What it does mean is that you have now exponentially increased the value of your program. When you increase the value of your program, it allows you to justify the price point that you're asking for. Now, of course, there's other things that you should say in specific tonality that you should use the scripting to be able to say these things properly. And again, if you're interested in that, you want us to develop it personally for you and your school, your business. All you got to do, comments, let's go, put it in the comments, we'll reach out. If you're trying to structure this so that you can charge that price point that you want, I would highly suggest that you go through 
and you get all of those features and all of those things that you're going to provide for people and you tie it back into the reason why they came to you in the first place. Do those things, that value stack that you created, does that actually help the person that's coming in because they want to lose weight? And then you need to show them how this thing that you have up here ties back to the reason that they came in the door. And if you can do those things, my friends, you can increase your pricing. And when you increase your pricing, you can start increasing your profitability. And when you can do that, you can change more lives because you have a team that you can actually hire. You have people that you can actually rely on to help you achieve this big vision, this big dream that you have. Maybe you have a dream of having multiple locations. Maybe you have a dream of having a big giant school. That's what I had was a dream of doing that. Maybe you have a dream of being able to leave your business running and go on vacation for a couple of weeks. Whatever your dream is, it's only going to become a reality when you can start taking small action steps such as this, so just taking the time to sit there and think through, how can I add value? How can I increase my revenue? How can I increase my overall profit? Hey, listen, if this has helped you today, go ahead and drop value bomb in the comment. I'd love to see how many of you guys that this has actually helped um, and has provided value to you. I'd love to see that. By the way, guys, you don't want to miss next Thursday. Got a special treat for you guys. Same time. 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you made it to the end of this video, you were part of the Team Finisher crew. So write Team Finisher in the comments. And I'll see you guys next week. Hope you have a fantastic day. Until next time.